you got crowds of people just to be there because he's well known. You've got the disciples surrounding him like bouncers. You've got the sick wanting to be healed. You've got demon possessed perhaps shouting at him. Then you've got the Pharisees and the Sadducees also accusing him, asking questions. You've got scribes writing down everything so that the Pharisees and the Sadducees could use it to accuse him. Today, it would be like the, the media would be all around him, taking photographs, taking videos of him. Be, for, for instance, today, if it had happened today, everyone would be on their mobile phones filming everything he said and did, just as he's walking along, just to say, oh, look, I'm with Jesus today on their Facebook page, or they would use it to accuse him of something. So even today, the media would be out to have him killed. For one minute, they would be saying who our hero he is, and for all the good he's doing, for the next minute, they'll be putting him down by his words. And that's how it was there in the situation in the temple. The Pharisees, as we saw in the last chapter, were looking for something to accuse him of. They asked him about taxes. They asked him about his authority to do the things that he was doing. Still very angry with him and upset with him. They still they wanted him dead and Judas hadn't yet decided to help the Pharisees out. He actually went to the Pharisees to look for an opportunity to betray him because he loved money more than he loved Jesus. People wanted to get directly to Jesus. That, like the time when he was in the crowd, he was on the way to rise her daughter from the dead and the woman came up behind him in the crowd who touched me when the woman touched his clothes they said to him well seen this crowd around you why are you asking who touched you but jesus knew that somebody had deliberately taken the hold of him for their healing and so here was people crowding around him shouting and asking questions and to touch him Pharisees wanted to get him to arrest him like on you see on the news when there's big protests and big gatherings big crowds swarming around somebody who is famous the people will be asking the disciples questions as well as asking Jesus questions so it would be quite a noisy chaotic time in that temple because remember that Jesus had already been teaching the people, probably healed a few people. He'd already overturned the tables of the money changers, so that was another controversy the Pharisees were angry about. So all sorts were going on there. You have to recognise as well that in Jesus' ministry, he used what we know as apologetics. And apologetics is defending your stance, then defending your faith, defending what you believe and what you stand for. And Jesus and the disciples used apologetics. The verse for apologetics is found in 1 Peter 3.15 and we should all be ready as Christians to defend our faith because for 2,000 years the Bible, Christian faith has been under attack, under scrutiny. The Bible's always been questioned, people have always been out to criticise and undermine the Bible historically, scientifically and in other ways but it has always stood firm. The seemingly contradictions aren't there. The Gospels, for instance, they all agree with each other. Though there's different viewpoints there, they don't discount each other. They all stay together, they all stand together. John's Gospel is radically different from Matthew, Mark and Luke's, but they are, they are still together. They do not contradict. Jesus also used what's called polemics. As we see that apologetics is defence, polemics is like the attack. So when Jesus in Matthew 23, he's attacking the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the teachers of the law and the scribes and he's calling them out on their hypocrisy and the way that they bring burdens on the people. He calls them out and he attacks them and he says to you, says to them many times, woe to you Pharisees and scribes, hypocrites. And he says that several times and because Jesus wasn't just meek and mild and loving and kind and nice. Nice isn't a fruit of the Spirit. He was loving in all that he said. He didn't use swear words. He, he didn't curse them. He would call them out and say what they were doing, challenge them in what they were doing. And that's what polemics is. There are times when we we can use polemics, but it, it's always best first to use the apologetic to defend your position when anyone asks you for the reason why you believe in Jesus Christ, why he is your Lord and he is your Saviour. No scripture, the things that Jesus said and did. You get a good study Bible, there's lots of cross-references in there, notes that will help you 
understand the background of some of the scenes there, just as I've described to you today, 